Hey everybody and welcome to live stream number 69. Well, actually this is not live stream number 69. This is a recording. I did live stream number 69 last night and had all kinds of issues with the stream. Um, the content was good, but it was really hard for people to watch. So what I've decided to do instead is to record it uh, just like if I did a live stream, so just re-recording everything. This is 69. This is about uh, the basics for rendering. So absolutely beginner for rendering inside of Fusion 360. So I'm not gonna go through my whole spiel about welcome to the live stream. This is a recording, but thank you for watching. Let's jump inside of Fusion 360. So uh, the issue we had was some, some rendering things inside, well, the issue was that when I started turning on the rendering inside of Fusion 360, it made the whole stream freeze up. So that's why we're just gonna do it like this. This was a part that I showed, uh, I just did a video on for some cam, and I thought that maybe we would use this one for uh, this live stream, because most of the time when people are talking about rendering, they're mostly thinking of like, um, they have a product they got to launch and they want their 3D model to kind of like look all shiny and pretty to present it to a customer. Or maybe you're just doing rendering to impress your friends. Uh, but I actually have used it uh, a few times um, when I used to work uh, at the shop floor. So one time we wanted to, uh, we were quoting for a new company that we really wanted to, uh, to get a quote and get some attention from and get some work from. And uh, we knew that, you know, other people were quoting on the job. And normally when you send a quote for a machine part, you just, uh, you know, you send an email and says, all right, you know, $3,000 for 10 of them, you know, so and so much money for 50 of them. So what we did instead, just to kind of like try to get, you know, a little bit of intention was we took the 3D model that they had provided for us to quote on and we rendered it and sent it to them, kind of like just to say, here's your part finished. And uh, we did not get that job, but we did get the next job from him. And it was a much better job, quite frankly, made more money on it. So that's the angle that I'm taking from this rendering. I don't think it's just about, you know, uh, model up a cool watch and then make it look real. You can actually use it in other kind of applications. So enough talking. So this was a part, you can see here I got the cam tool path uh, in here, but the rendering environment is of course in here. now. I'm gonna show you a couple of things. First of all, I prefer, when it comes to rendering, and you will see later why, prefer to make a copy of the original model so I don't mess with that original model. So I'm just gonna go up here and I'm gonna go and do a save as, and you get the save as icon. I'm just gonna call it render just to uh, kind of like keep everything separate and hit save with that. And you will see how uh, Fusion automatically switch it over that model. So I kind of like closed down my original one. Uh, that will be sitting down here. And then I have my my new one uh, coming here. So this is a copy. Now, let's go first into uh, the render workspace in here. So it is really trying to take your model and make it uh, more photorealistic, I guess, is what we should what we should say. And um, what you get in here is you get a little menu and we're gonna go through all the different ones. Then down here in the bottom, you also get uh, a handful of different, um, this in a couple of seconds, you will have different views of this model in here. Now I normally like to minimize it on the little button just so I get a little bit more disk space. We're gonna come back to the, it's called the rendering gallery just in a second. Now the first button here is appearances and appearances you have seen me use in other live streams before, if you check those out, uh, it's the standard appearance. And this part actually already have an appearance on it. If I click on it, you will see that I had applied a dark blue uh, appearance to this um, because I wanted to look a little bit different when I did my video for cam. Um, but this default one is steel. So I can actually just take the steel and drag it on top of the other one here. And then we're kind of like back to a normal, but appearances uh, for the model is of course um, one of the most important things in here. Uh, you know, how is your model gonna look like? And you will see that there's a lot of different 
uh, types in here. There's some woods, <clears throat> metals, and, and other kinds. The next one is our scene. So that has actually to do with around the model. Um, we can also insert some decals in here. And we have talked about decals before. If we go out to the model environment uh, and go to the insert, you will see that that's the same button that is out here. By the way, anytime I've been out here in the model environment where you'll see me right click and click appearances, that's the same as you see in here in the rendering workspace in here with the baseball up here. Um, the next one is a texture map control. So if I hover over it, we get this little picture uh, of this airplane and the propeller is made out of wood. So what the texture map controls lets you do is we can actually um, kind of rotate the grain of wood to, um, to kind of the, the angle we want. Um, then there is the in canvas render, and this was what kind of like messed up the live stream when I recorded it when I turned that on. Um, but it should work now where I'm recording with my normal screen recording thing. Um, there's two modes to the in canvas rendering. Let me just go into the settings in here. There's an advanced and there's a fast. Now, what this in canvas mode is, is a quick view uh, to give you an idea about how you're finished. Uh, render over here is going to look like when you finally render it out in high quality. So if I just leave it on fast and hit OK um, and turn it on by clicking on the in canvas here, uh, you will see that I quickly get a little bit of pixelation here on the, the screen and my model changed a little bit. Now I can turn it off again by hitting the same button again. If I go in and hit the advanced one and hit OK and hit the in canvas again, you will see that now it's going to be a lot more uh, grainy. It's going to be a, a more a better finish. But again, this is really only used to give you uh, an idea uh, for how your final render will will look like. So you many times are turning these kind of like on and off just to kind of get an idea. So that's kind of like the buttons. And the last one is the render. We're going to get to that when we're ready to to render this part out and actually make an image that uh, that looks good. So the two biggest things you probably want to start out with is first of all, the appearance, and the second of all, uh, your scene settings. So if I just go in here right now and I hit final render, I think that you can imagine that this is going to be really gray and boring. There's not much to this right now. It's just kind of like a part. It might look, if I hit the final, it might... The part might look kind of, you know, real as, as, as machine out of steel, um, but it's kind of like sitting in this gray environment, not great. That's where the scene settings comes in. So I'm click on scene settings up here, and uh, you have some different options in here. Um, you have some brightness where you can control the brightness of the part. I normally don't mess with that, uh, but the next one here is positioning. If you click on that, you can actually position the lighting that is in here. Uh, so if I grab this rotation, you will see the shadows on this part are actually being, I can control the shadow. So I can move kind of like a, a light in here. Just click on it again if you want to get out of it. Then you will see that there is a background. Now right now it's set to solid and you will see we have a color in here. If I click on, on solid color and I hit environment, you will see that the background changed. Now, if I go back to solid color, think about it like this. This part is kind of living within a dome or kind of like a sphere right now, like inside of a big tent. See, if I take this model right now and just kind of like spin it around, it doesn't look any different than our normal model would do. But if I switch solid color over to environment, and I start spinning it around, you'll see that there is something weird. There is like almost like a light um, on top of here. So like almost like if you were, you know, going into get a photo setting, there's actually a light. And that's what you can control when you are changing the position uh, in here. We can actually control that light. We're moving that light around. Now, the best way to probably look at a environment area is to go up and look at the environment library. If I click on that, 
you will see right now the current environment is sharp lights, but you actually see that there's some different ones in here and you just kind of like drag and drop them in there. So if I take cool light, it changes a little bit. If I take grid light, it changes a little bit different. And it is these lights inside of this uh, kind of environment. You will see that now the light source has changed inside of this dome. Now you will also see there's a lot of these other cool ones in here that you can you can bring in. So if I take plaza, for example, I drag that in, then whoa, look at this. You are actually now somewhere. And that is kind of like how the pod lives inside of this sphere uh, where we now have like this landscape. And this looks really cool, right? And you might be like, whoa, that is absolutely, that is absolutely amazing. And it is, but I will say, I think this is amazing if it was a car or something that we we were rendering, you could use uh, the plaza or some of the, there's one called Crossroads. Let's drag that one in. Um, right now we are kind of like, if I zoom out a little bit, we're on a road uh, with the part here. And, and that's kind of cool if it was a car, but with this part here, I'm thinking more like it's somebody dropped it when they walked around with it and it's laying on the ground. Um, so be aware of these different um, environments. Another thing I want to show you that is probably easiest to show if I do bring the plaza back again, if I go, you can leave it on this environment. Let's go back into settings. There is flattened to ground. So let me just click that. And you see how, as soon as you do that, it actually throws the part right on the ground. Something you definitely don't want to do with a steel, steel part. Um, but again, these environments are really cool if you have something that makes sense are in these environments. Uh, this part, ah, not so much. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to pick one of these more boring uh, environments. There's one called Photo Booth uh, that I many times just start out with. So I'm dragging that one in. So now I kind of like have this Photo Booth kind of glare of light coming coming down. And you maybe want to play with some of the other ones. But for this here, uh, this is probably more of the right lighting. Um, Let's go back in here again. Now, there is some camera settings in here that you can play with, but honestly, I don't really play with these camera lenses uh, generally. So if you're just starting out, you can definitely go in here and, and experiment with them. But if you're just starting out, I would not worry about that. Another one is the depth of field. I only find this one interesting if you have a really um, bigger assembly with a big parts in it. Uh, like if it was a car, you might want to set like a depth and field. But when you check it on, you can kind of like set the center of focus. And wherever you click, that little green dot will kind of like go to that uh, center of focus. I'm generally finding the blur to be way too high. I normally have to turn it down. But again, this is really only the camera in here. I really only use for very special things. If this is just a beginner don't worry about it. Also be aware of there is a save default and you can restore back to default, which is kind of nice in here. So really all we did in here right now was we changed the environment from a solid color to the photo booth. We actually got a little bit less of a shadow because of the photo booth versus shop lights. Um, and I turned flat into ground on here. Um, and that's really all I'm going to start out by doing inside of the setting. So all these uh, great environments in here, like the plaza and the crossroads and the other ones, you know, they look great, but it doesn't really fit to our part. But that brings something up that I think is, is kind of interesting. And that is, well, if we look at the image that we have right now, it's again, very gray on gray and not really exciting. And you ask yourself, why can it, how can it be that the plaza and these other ones look so, so great. And I had a great friend of mine who one time, you know, explained it by saying that it's because the eye sees other things than just, just the item. If you just render this block right now sitting in this gray space, it's not really exciting. Uh, you need something else around it to kind of like make it exciting, if you know what I mean. It's a little bit like, you know, an iPhone is not really exciting by itself if it was just rendered, but you always have somebody who's like really happy holding it and interesting holding it, and that kind of like ties it all together. So one of the things that I have found, and this I struggled with this for a long time, 
uh, was I would render something out like this, and it really just didn't look didn't look great at all. Um, and then I figured that the trick is to actually have something like around it and create kind of like a perspective of the part. And the way I normally do that, because right now, again, this part is kind of like just sitting out in space. There's like this dome area. I will actually go back into the model environment and start a sketch. And this is part of why I like to have the model saved out as its own kind of thing. Um, so let's go in here and uh, let's go in and start a sketch. So I'm going to create a sketch here on the face of this part. And I'm really just going to set something up uh, that is not really uh, that interesting per se. And I'm not even going to really define it. I'm just going to sketch this kind of like L shape or shelf looking thing up here. Um, and then I'm going to extrude it. And I'm going to go symmetrical. I'm just going to make this like long. No big idea. And I'm not going to make join because then it all becomes one. I'm making a new body. So kind of like I place the part on kind of like in the shelf area here. Why? Well, because now when we go back into uh, the model environment, you will see that now we have this area in here. Um, and if I zoom in, I just want to make sure I don't have the bottom in here in my image. Now I could apply some appearances to this. So check this out. <clears throat> we have our kind of like boring part sitting over here. This doesn't really look very interesting right now. If I go in and I click on appearances and I go down to the wood here, and don't forget, you can always download all these different ones by clicking the little arrow, it's gonna download. If I take this cherry, I'm gonna set this to face. I just want it on the face. Cherry and put it right here on this shelf area here. Okay, now suddenly that kind of changed everything a little bit. I kind of like got kind of like a table here. And on this backsplash, um, I actually like to go in with a paint. So let's go to paint, glossy, and I'm just going to pick like a white paint. Again, just throw it up on the face here. And already now, if you look at this, um, it looks a lot better than it did before. And really all it is, is kind of like, I just, you see what I did? I kind of like just created this little fake shelf where now my part is kind of like living on here. Now, if you want to, um, we could hit the in canvas render and just kind of like uh, get an idea about what, we, what we're what we gonna end up with here. And this is where everything's gonna kind of like, it's, this is gonna slow down uh, a little bit uh, you will see down in the corner here, we kind of like have a, a timer uh, that is that is running down here, 15 seconds, and in iterations, and there's excellent quality, final quality, and infinitive quality. You can actually grab this little player down here, and you can drag it down uh, if you don't want it just to keep going. So I might just put it around here, and then the, the, the line here will stop when we, when we get to that. So... This is a way to kind of like get an idea about how uh, how things are looking. So already by doing this, I really have created something uh, a little bit around this part. Now you will see that I do get it's maybe hard to see on the on the recording here, but I do get some reflections uh, and things. And you can definitely go in and mess um, with a lot of these how they should should reflect. You'll see when it hits that line right there, it's going to stop doing what it's doing. Um, so this is where you can control how fine you want it. But creating that little shelf and putting your part on this really gives you uh, an opportunity to kind of see uh, what, you're, what you're kind of um, getting in here. Now, to make it a little bit more kind of interesting, um, what I did, I'm just gonna get out of this render now, what I did was I actually created a drawing of this part and I posted it out as a PDF. It's not a very good, it's not a great drawing, uh, but I put some dimensions on the part and kind of like just did the YouTube logo, whatever. Then I created, then I took a, a picture of this. So it's a, a decal. So if I go up here and I click on the decal and I select the face, I want it on the table here. And 
hit select an image and I'm just going to pull it up here. Now when that comes in, it's of course not where I want it, um, I can scale it down. So let's get a little bit smaller. We can kind of like rotate it around a little bit um, and we can start moving kind of like this drawing around. I might make it a little bit smaller. Grab the scaling. Um, and this is maybe where you kind of like will play a little bit around with this. And I would probably or maybe even um, try a couple of different rendings with this. Um, so now suddenly, you know, we start having something here that could actually be kind of interesting. Let me just play play around with it a little bit here. And if I hit the in render now, let me just go over to fast this time so you can see that. Um, you will see that we start getting something that looks maybe, it starts looking a little bit interesting. I do see though that when I do this fast rendering, I do get a lot of reflection in my pot. But I mean, I, I like good machine surfaces, but this maybe is a little bit uh, too much reflection. But I might have, I will see if I go in and change it to the advanced, the better in canvas rendering, I might get a little bit less um, in there. Um, and you can go in and control all this. This is probably another, another live stream. I can still see, I think I'm going to get some in here. If I just get out of the in canvas render for a second and I get back into our appearances, uh, notice that the steel that we have on the part, if I right click on it and click edit, um, you do get some options in here. You can set a roughness. The rougher you make this, the less reflection will get in it. But there's actually also an advanced in here uh, where you get all kinds of options uh, in here where you can do all kinds of stuff. You can actually create your own materials. Uh, you can take a, a picture of something and resemble that in the render, but that's for a completely other uh, live stream. But if we do think that this is too shiny, we might want to try another kind of metal in here. Um, so if we go in here to steel, down here, you will see that there's a steel brush linear. If we drag that one, and you could either drag it on the pot, but you can actually also just drag it up on the other appearance that exists. Now we get this on here. Let me zoom in a little bit on this model. You can see how we now get the grain from this brushed area. And that's where this texture map control can be really handy. If I click on that and I select the model, you will see that it's set to automatic, but I can actually go in here and I can change it. So I can go in here and say planner. And when I do planner, I actually want an axis. So if I select this, now I can actually start manipulating that grain to whatever the heck, uh, whatever the heck you want. Um, this is extremely powerful to play around with the grain. You can see there's planner, sphere, might not look so good with this one, cylindrical. Uh, so you can change all these different, you can play around with that, with that grain if you want to. That's the texture uh, map in here. So what we got now is we got a model that kind of, you know, with that drawing on the table and the table and the backsplash, I think we've made something that looks a little bit more interesting than just part gray on gray. And another thing you probably want to, so what I normally do when I render things out is you many times have to render five or six different where you're playing with the positioning. Because if I position it like this and I render it out, it might look like that it's sliding off the table, right? Uh, versus if it was more like flat, like how are you looking at this part? And that brings up the point that, you know, we have the view cube up here and we have some, some like default views. When you render out, don't try to have like the perfect view like this. I've actually found that if you make the view a little skewed, sometimes it's a little bit better. If you have like a weird angle and it's not right in center, that the part is kind of like, you know, I like the idea that I can, that it doesn't look like it's falling on the table. I like the idea that the part of the paper is showing on the back here. Like 
Don't try to make it like sitting right in the center. When you're ready to do your rendering, you can go in here and click the render button that will open up this view here. Now there's a lot of different settings in here, but generally speaking, uh, this is probably what you want to go with. There's two things you need to know about. There's uh, two qualities. There's a final quality and there's a standard quality. You know, if you're creating renderings that gotta go up on your website and, and gotta look really professional, uh, final is probably what you want. It's a little bit better quality. But honestly, I have a hard time many times seeing the difference between the two. So if you click standard, uh, that is normally good enough for me. That uh, goes down to the second option about do you want to render it locally or do you want to render it on your on the cloud? So anybody who signs up with Fusion 360, you do get a certain amount of cloud credits available for you. So if you choose to do it on the cloud, it will do less of your software resource or your computer resources, hard drive resources. Um, it will literally send the rendering up in the cloud. It will render up there using um, the servers up in the cloud versus your desktop. And the only reason that you really want to consider that is that if you have an older laptop, or I mean, this when you start doing rendering, it's going to pixelate this. It can be a big resource hog, and maybe to the point where you can't really do anything while it's rendering. You just got to kind of like wait and let the machine do what you do. So you can definitely save a lot of time. Plus, if you're rendering locally in the machine, you can only render one picture at the time. But if you do it up in the cloud, you can do, like I said before, I will normally like find one position of the part, hit render, find another position of the part, hit render, and do that five or six times, and then kind of like see what I get afterwards. So with the cloud, you can send five or six or how many you want up there to solve and they will all solve at the same time. If you do notice that there is a frequently asked questions, if you do run out of cloud credits, you can actually purchase uh, more of them. So I'm going to I'm going to select the cloud render here. I'm going to select the standard who only uses one cloud credit. Um, and then as it is here, I'm going to click uh, the render button. It saves the document. And then remember how I was talking about before, there's this rendering gallery. Uh, if you click a little plus sign, this is where uh, your render will appear. And then you can click on that. You can save it out as a PNG or, or, or something, something else. But I hope that this uh, was a good overview of the render. So just to kind of like summarize, uh, up here in the menu, you got your beats ball that has all to do with the appearances on the part. And like I put it on the table and the wall, you got the scene area in here. I think that I have spent too much time trying to tweak in things in here um, where I think it's easier to just, you know, uh, play around with the other kind of tips that I gave. Try to get something else on the screen than just your part if you can. Uh, how I model up kind of like the shelf area. Uh, the decal, that was how I placed the drawing. Uh, what kind of like just breaks it up a little bit, right? Makes it kind of interesting. I should probably spend a little bit more time on the drawing, make it a little bit nicer. Uh, texture control is really good for the part here. As I'm talking, my rendering is in the cloud is almost done, believe it or not. Uh, we could turn the in cameras on and off. Um, and that's kind of like it's going to give you a preview. I don't use it too much. Um, like I use it a couple of times just to make sure that things are set up. And then the final render button over here. My, my um, thing is actually done. So click on that. And it's going to open up in the window here. And uh, in here, you can then do a couple of different things. One of the things you can do, you can save it as a PNG. So let me just go to my desktop and I'm going to save it here. Now, I'm going to make sure that this file is available for you down in the description area. Here you can see the final render. Oops. Here you can see the final render. Um, I'm going to make sure that this is down in the description area um, so you can kind of like take a look at it too. Uh, on your own eyes. So a couple of things that I can see here, I do get some some glare. I may want to play around with the, the lighting on the wall. Everything looks maybe a little bright. But again, if you look at this, uh, as you see before, where it was just like gray on gray, this definitely makes it uh, a little bit more interesting. I hope that you found uh, this uh, helpful. This was live stream number 69, recorded 
Uh, but I, I felt like that this would be worth just kind of like showing you getting into to the render space. So go in there, play around with with it a little bit, um, and kind of like get your get your hands dirty a little bit with this. If you're looking for inspiration, uh, go out to Google and search Fusion 360 Gallery. Uh, there's a lot of users out there who does a lot better job than I do when it comes to this rendering. And by the way, if you are one of those superstars who make a lot of cool rendering, do me a favor. Uh, if you have any tips and tricks to share, put it down in the comments area of this video. Um, you know, we all, uh, we're all learning from it and really appreciate it. So I'm going to end this recording of live stream number 69. Number 70 will happen uh, a little bit later today. So thank you so much. Hope you have an awesome day. Take care, guys.